next thing I want you to do is uh, type in NA27 in the command box. NA27. And Logos Bible Software, you have to learn to use your abbreviations. NA27, notice and it says Open Nestle Alum Greek New Testament 27th edition. Click on that, please. And your Nestle Alum should open up. Okay. Now mine open up automatically to Matthew 1 uh, 15. Yours probably did not. So in the reference box, in the Bible reference box, type in, and you always work with abbreviations, type in MT1 without a space, and then space 18. MT1 space 18, and then you can hit that uh, little blue signal with a uh, space blue circle with a white arrow on it, click on it, and it should go to Matthew uh, 1, 18. Does that all work for you? Okay. Good. Then the next thing I would like you to do is uh, open up uh, the NIV. So you just type in NIV in the command box. And then click on Open the New International, which should open next to it. And notice that it automatically opens to Matthew 1.15. For me, it should open up to 1.18 for you folks. Does that work? Okay. Let's first open up the Net Bible. Type in NET in the command box. And you open up the Net Bible. which is going to open up uh, on top of the Greek. But notice it also opens up to your Matthew passage. It does that automatically. So now what I want you to do is put your cursor on the Net Bible, left click on it, and drag it over the NIVs and position it in such a way so that that whole right half of the screen becomes blue and then just drop it. And then you have the net bible there as well. I don't know if this is easier or not, but I, I just opened a new tab and then I just clicked on that bible. That way it didn't split or anything. I don't know if that's quicker or not. I got the same result. I just, yeah. I just clicked on the tab button. Okay, my interest is in verse 18 for our opening uh, meditation. We just uh, celebrated Christmas by my opening uh, meditation with you folks just to do a little bit of practice here is on verse 18, and I'm assuming that every one of you has had grief. I was told that that is an assumption I may make. Okay, so I will be asking you some Greek questions. So, uh, what the NIV, the NIV translates verse 18, the first part, as follows. Now the birth of Jesus Christ happened this way. Huh. But now the Greek says, told that Jesu Christo, that comes first, and that looks like a genitive phrase to me. <coughs> uh, just in case I'm not sure, if my Greek is rusty, I just put my cursor on Yezo, and then it says genitive, so I guess I was right. My Greek is not that rusty after all. Uh, the conjunction that usually introduces a, a new paragraph, but, but it does link with the preceding. Uh, and then it has a Genesis, which sounds an awful lot like Genesis, right? 
And as a matter of fact, uh, let's just do the following minute. Would you, in your command, let's see if this one works, if you go LX, you type in the command LX, and it says, open Septua Hinta morphologically text. That's the Septuagint, the translation of the Hebrew Bible. So let's open that and see what's where it's going to open. It's probably going to open right over the top of my... Uh, you should have. There should be a Septuagint in there. Lex of Greek English into linear Septuagint. That's okay. Yes. Yeah. And in that one, you type in Genesis 1 1. Let's see if they give us the. They did not give me the title. Yeah, if you look at the title of uh, the book of Genesis, even in English, it's Genesis, that's Greek. Well, that is not the title of uh, the book in Hebrew. Books are known by the first word of the text, Bereshit. Here it's called Genesis. So, and uh, what we're following here is the tradition. If you would type in there, please just type in G and two space four. Uh, you notice in uh, Genesis two four. Uh, and then the genitive of heaven and earth. This is the book of the Genesis of heaven and earth. So, when you hear, and I can just go back to uh, click on NA27 and go back to Matthew 118. The very structure there of a Genesis, that's Sounds an awful lot like Genesis, right? So that's what makes me curious and say, now did the NIV and the other English Bible translations really get this right about the birth? And that brings me to a comment that I'd like to make, and you'll probably hear me say it throughout this short course. One of the things that you have to develop and using Bible software, any Bible software, is curiosity. You've got to ask questions. What Bible software does for you, it gives you a lot of information at the same time. I've got four books open. In the old way, that would mean that I would have to have four different Bibles open. I'd have to get them off of my shelf. I'd have to use the thing that my father-in-law made for me, where I can rest these books. It, it occupies, you know, this much on my desk space. And, and here I'm spending all that time. I've got it on this little screen. But now what do you do with that extra information? You've got to ask intelligent questions. Say, okay, Genesis. That reminds me of the book of Genesis. Okay, that's a Greek, plain old Greek word. When you say open your Bible to Genesis to the people in church who speak in Greek, they don't know it. They think it's English, but it's not. It's Greek. Right? Well, what does Genesis mean? Well, then you have to go to the Hebrew in order to figure that out. Well, you folks haven't had Hebrew yet. Yeah, has everybody had Hebrew here? Who has not had Hebrew? Let me get it. Okay, well, you will. <laughs> the Hebrew word for it is tole do. Oh, they don't. But before I go there, just give a quick scan of Matthew 1, 18, and read through verse 25, each one on their own, okay. and answer this question for me. Do these verses really <coughs> report the birth of Jesus Christ? That's the caption for the NIV. But does it really report it? So what do you say? It's only very uh, glanced away at the end. She gave birth to a son. 
Yeah, this is a kind of indirectly, right? He took his wife, did not have marital relations with her until, that's the Nat Bible, until she gave birth to his son whom he named Jesus. That's all. So is the translation of Genesis correct? Would you at least admit that that's a fair question? And that maybe I ought to do a little exploration. Well, then what I would do is you right click on the noun Genesis and then you make sure that you have lemma where it says lemma Genesis on your screen. Can everybody see it on this screen and then see it on your own as well? Okay. It's very hard to see that screen. It's hard to see that screen. Okay, we'll change that uh, when we go to the next part, settings. Then click on, go slide over to the next menu and search this resource. Search this resource. Notice there are five occurrences of that now in the New Testament. There are... Uh, and what is of interest to me is that in Matthew, it only occurs twice. Matthew 1.1 1, 1 and Matthew 1.18. Only two occurrences in Matthew. Well, then it occurs in Luke and twice in James. But that's pretty significant, wouldn't you think? So, if it occurs in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, would you agree with me that I would at least have to look up what it says in Matthew 1.1? 1, 1? I'm going to close this search. And notice what I did. You click on that X in the corner. Anytime you want to close a resource, you can either click on the X, or you just go Control w and you'll close the resource that you were using. So now I'm going to... What I can do is double click a minute on 15 and I'll just type in a 1 and we'll go to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. And notice what I have there. I have Biblos, Genesos, Yezo, Christo, Puyo Davi, Puyo Abraham. Everybody see it? Now that looks to me very similar to something we've seen in the Septuagint in Genesis 2-4. This, look at it, a Biblos Genesos. It's even more similar if you go in Genesis, you type in GN5 space 1. to Genesis 5.1, this is the book of Anthropon, of men. It's very interesting. So can everybody see the Old Testament allusion here, what Matthew is doing? He's clearly going back to those genealogies, is he not? So, is it the birth that we're interested in, in Matthew, or the genealogy? I would suggest the genealogy and that the book that we call the Gospel of Matthew is really the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. It's the title. And so that 118 is then the, res the resume of that story because the Hebrew word toledot means the end of something that began. The total oath of Abraham is what? Isaac. So the story is about Isaac. Where, where is that? That's in the Hebrew. I'm just giving you a piece of information that's not on the screen here. Okay? So that's the use of Genesis. So here we're interested in, in the genealogy. Does that make sense, uh, make sense to everybody? So it's not just the birth, but the genealogy. Well, then uh, let's take a look at that genealogy. Uh, let me see here. I'm 
we look at all of that genealogy, and uh, there is a constant verb, Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot, and so on. And uh, then you go to verse 16, verse 16 in the Greek, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, out of whom was born Jesus called to Christ. Now it is to shift. All of these green verbs here, they're all the same. I hope you can see that on the screen. And I look at the bottom and it says verb, aorist, active, indicative. Joseph didn't beget anything, did he? The verb switches to the aorist passive. And aorist passive is frequently used for what we call the divine passive. The understood agent is God. So that asks for an explanation. Would you agree? And that's what 118 does. It explains that divine passive. 